Hello, this is the news on NTA International. I am Olajide Bello. Now the headlines. In search for gender equity, organization of African First Ladies launched We Are Equal campaign in Angola chooses education as tool to bridge gap. Aftermath of last November's failed coup in Syria alone, military court sentences 24 soldiers to lengthy prison terms. Outgoing head of the civil service winds down activities, the firm's groundbreaking of 216 housing units for civil servants. As Africa continues its search for gender equity, Nigeria's First Lady Lure Mitinobu says the continent with Nigeria leading must retain its focus on using education to drive needed change by implementing gender-sensitive curriculum and educational materials that challenges stereotypes. She was speaking in Angola where she joined her counterparts under the auspices of the Organization of African First Ladies to launch the We Are Equal campaign that targets the use of education to combat child and youth violence in Africa. State House correspondent Adeni Itaiwo reports. The Organization of African First Ladies for Development, or AFLAD, has been at the forefront of efforts to improve women's equity and related issues on the continent using its We Are Equal campaign. Education as a tool has featured prominently in the campaign and while acknowledging its pivotal role in shaping attitudes, beliefs and behaviors, Nigeria's first lady, Uruwe Mitinumbu, stressed the need for the process to start with early education. Girls and boys should be encouraged to participate equally in all activities to help dismantle the notion of gender-specific roles while their textbooks should showcase diverse role models, illustrating that both men and women can excel in any field of their choice. When gender equity becomes an integral part of our educational system, there will be a shift in societal attitudes, whereby boys and men learn to respect and value women and girls as equals, reducing the likelihood of engaging in violent behavior. The first lady decried the spate of gender and domestic violence, especially incidences of rape and defilement, saying an educated and well-informed people of both gender would abstain from search. The president of the Republic of Angola, Manuel Lorenco, urged the first ladies to lend their voices to quell the various conflicts around the world, especially as women and children are the worst affected. He commended Oaflad for its efforts at giving women an audible voice in ensuring the building of a society where men and women have equal rights and opportunities. Angolan First Lady Anna Diaz Lorenko promised to sustain the fight against rape and see to the enhancing of legislation to punish perpetrators appropriately. The launch of the Weaiko campaign for Angola had in attendance the first ladies of Sao Tome, Cape Verde, Sierra Leone, Mozambique, and representatives of others. Adeni Itaiwo, NT. A military court in Sierra Leone has sentenced 24 soldiers to lengthy prison terms for their roles in a failed attempt last November to overthrow the government of President Julius Bill. The sentences were read out in court Friday with the judge handing out prison terms ranging from 50 to 120 years on those convicted. Justin Bemui reports. Military barracks, two prisons and other locations, freeing about 2,200 inmates and killing more than 20 persons. The sentencing follows the jailing in July of 11 civilians, police and prison officers for their roles in the insurrection. A seven-member military jury found most of the court-martialed soldiers guilty by unanimous verdict after hours of deliberations. The men faced a total of 88 charges including mutiny, murder, aiding the enemy and stealing public or service property. All but one of those arraigned were rank and file soldiers. 
a lieutenant colonel was found guilty and received the longest prison term of 120 years. Before handing out the sentences, George advocate Mark Ngegba, himself a former military officer, said, and I quote, when we reach this conclusion for sentences, it is to send a message of zero tolerance for such an act in the military. End of quote. Of the remaining three, one was found not guilty, another sentenced earlier for pleading guilty, and the third trial will conclude at a later date. Family members of the convicts wailed inside the court as the sentences were read out. The failed attempt followed an election which President Bill narrowly won to secure a second term. His victory was disputed by the main opposition APC party, while some local and international observers also questioned the transparency of the vote. Justin Bemuni, NT News. Eight people, including two children, were killed when a landfill in the Ugandan capital Kampala collapsed on Saturday. The city's authority confirmed that homes, people and animals were affected by the landslide at the garbage dump in Kitezi, a district in the north of Kampala after heavy rainfalls. Justin Bermui again reports. The Kampala Capital City Authority KCCA said in a statement posted on X that 14 people had been rescued and taken to hospital. However, it did not disclose the condition of the victims. This is after eight people were confirmed dead, comprising six adults and two children by the authority. Images from the site of the tragedy showed an excavator shifting through piles of rubbish as crowds of local residents looked on. The KCCA said there was a structural failure in waste mass in the morning resulting in a collapsed section of the landfill. An independent newspaper in Uganda said on its website that the head of the city authority, Ereas Lukwago, had warned in January that people working and living near the Kitezi landfill were at risk of numerous health hazards due to overflowing waste. Justin Bemuni, NTA News. Mounted a counter terror operation in three border regions, joining Ukraine to hold Kyiv's advance deeper into Russia and warn that the fighting endangered a nuclear power plant. Ukrainian units stormed into Russia's western Kiosk region on Tuesday morning in a shock attack that largest and most successful cross-border offensive by Kyiv of the two-and-a-half-year conflict. Its troop had advanced several kilometers in Russia's army, has rushed in reserves and extra equipment, including convoys of tanks, rocket launchers and aviation units, though neither side has given precise details of the extent of the forces they have committed. Russia's nuclear agency on Saturday warned the Ukrainian attack posed a direct threat to the nearby Kosk nuclear power station. Prime Minister Kiev Stama warned that UK authorities must stay on high alert for more far-right riots as courts issued the first jail sentences for online incitement during the recent disorder. Justin Bermoyer reports that while England has had consecutive nights of relative quiet, disturbances have continued unabated in Northern Ireland, where police have blamed pro-UK loyalist paramilitaries for fueling the violence in Belfast. More than 1,000 anti-racism protesters massed in the Northern Irish capital on Friday amid a large police presence. Several anti-immigration demonstrators also showed up. Prime Minister Starmer told reporters during a visit to the London police headquarters that swift justice handed out by courts was helping deter more disorder in English towns. Starmer added that the authorities have to stay on high alert going into this weekend to make sure that communities are safe and secure. In the meantime, Anti-racism protesters have taken part in a Stop the Far Right demonstration outside of the headquarters of the Reform UK political party in London after far right riots shook British cities last week. Justin Bemuni, NT News. 
Salvador Ila, the Socialist Party, has been sworn in as the 133rd President of Catalonia in the ceremony that took place in the Catalan government headquarters in Barcelona. Present at the ceremony were various figures from the Catalan and Spanish political sphere, including former Parliament President Roger Torrent and the Mayor of Barcelona, Jaume Colobdoven. The 132nd Catalan president, Pere Aragones, presented Ila with the presidential medal at the ceremony. In his speech, the socialist leader promised to govern as well as he can for every Catalan. This institution is for all the Catalans and it has to be in service for everyone, he added. This new government intends to bring the maximum freedom, prosperity and equality to Catalonia as possible. The new president said that Catalonia is supportive and has emphasized that the defense of the Catalan language, culture and the territory is never aimed against anyone. Salvador Illa was voted president on Thursday on an eventful investiture debate as during all the former president whereabouts were unknown. He obtained an absolute majority with support from pro-independence Esquerra Republicana and left-wing Como Suma. The socialist obtained 42 seats in the last Catalan election, which means that he will have to make deals with other parties in order to push measures forward in the new government. Justin Bemuni, NTN News. Nigeria's obligation to the United Nations and decarbonization and net zero emission target of 2050 is on the path to fusion as climate advocates move to adopt new techniques to mitigate impact of climate change. Charles Alpha reports. Planting up trees has proven to be part of the solutions to reducing carbon footprint, flood control and ecosystem restoration. While Nigeria races towards meeting the United Nations climate change plan before 2050, more climate groups are employing innovative techniques and strategies to decarbonize the planet through digital smart card and wristband initiative. By eliminating for paper print card and providing a seamless sustainable alternative, we are taking significant steps to decarbonize our planet. This technology no doubt embodies our dedication to innovation and our responsibility to environmental issues and various challenges that besets our world today. 500 trees are expected to be planted within the federal capital territory before the end of this year and another 1 million across the states before 2027. We are committed to this vision. We are committed to this goal and also ensuring that the, the uh, global mission for United Nations in ensuring that trees, about 30 million trees, is being planted across Nigeria by 2030. This effort's key player said is geared towards building strong community resilience through education and fostering of environmental sustainability using leading climate-driven technologies. Charles Alpha. NT News. In line with President Bola Tinubu's desire to provide quality and affordable housing for civil servants across the nation, the head of the civil service of the Federation, Dr. Falashade Yemieso, has led the foundation of 216 units of housing projects under the Federal Integrated Housing Scheme in Abuja. Haman Jabani reports. The Federal Integrated Housing Scheme, cited at the premises of Public Service Institute of Nigeria will stand on 5.3 hectares of land and will accommodate 216 units of two and three bedroom apartments. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Falashade Mieso, commended the Institute while flagging on the fish housing estate, saying it is a great milestone urging to contractors to ensure the project is speedily completed according to design specifications. We understand that the, the earnings of civil servants is not much. So we try as much as possible to get the best quality for the minimum price. And you cannot get those opportunities 
anywhere else. While inaugurating a newly built sport complex named after her by the Public Service Institute Management, Dr. Paula Shadia Mesa called on civil servants to engage in physical exercises to boost their well-being and mental health. Director overseeing the Office of the Permanent Secretary Welfare Service Office, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation and the Administrator Public Service Institute speak more on the projects. As we embark on this new phase, we are confident that to the glory of God and by his help, the outcome will be equally successful in line with other projects that we have done. We anticipate that these new homes will provide comfort, security, and a sense of belonging to the fortunate beneficiaries. Sport, as we all know, provides a healthy outlet for stress and anxiety and support mental well-being. This is part of our efforts to drive the sports entertainment and cultural aspect of the renewed hope agenda. The fish estate will be allocated to call civil servants. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. This is the news on NTA International. It's time to take a short break. More news when we return. Please stay with us. Thanks for being there. Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, FC2 chapter, has signed a memorandum of understanding with a private PR firm in Abuja to address the gap in public relations consultancy and employment opportunities in Nigeria. Haman Jabani reports that the MOU is for an initial two years. The role of public relations professionals has evolved over the years. There was a time when it was limited to largely media relations. Now, the role of public relations is to guide organizations and individuals on matters of reputation. It is to achieve this that the Memorandum of Understanding was signed between the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, FCT Chapter, and a communication management company to see to the establishment of more public relations consultancy firms in Abuja that can address the need of the capital city. Both parties speak on the signing of the MOU that is for initial two years. And then collaborating with other PR agencies to ensure that the public relations needs of various organizations within the FCT and uh, if possible beyond are uh, met. So that is very, very important to us. And what that is going to also do for us is that uh, it's going to build an ecosystem where we are also going to be having a mentorship. Some of the crises that we see today are things that we can deal with if we approach, if we see communication as the most central aspect of what we do, whether in our private life or in, in, in public life. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. No, there's no challenge with implementing the MOU. Rather, what we, even, what we are even foreseeing is the likelihood that things are going to come out from this that we do not even envisage at this moment, which will even help to further broaden the scope and what the MOU is going to deliver. The partnership is expected to create a unique brand that will win the love and loyalty of customers within and outside the FCT. Haman Jabani, NTA News. Long queues have become a common sight at few NMPC stations dispensing fuel in Potakat, River State Capital. Robinson Duratai Day reports that the people were appealing to the authorities to make the product available to avoid hoarding as other outlets are now selling at high price. As early as 4 a.m., motorists, mostly commercial drivers, reportedly queued at the NMPC filling station along Station Road, Potakot, to get fuel at 591 Naira. Workers at the station are having difficult time in managing the crowd, coupled with anger in the people for the lingering fuel crisis. Uh, we try our best to control them. We try our best to put, to put things in order, to, to save and secure the, our job and our, our premises. It's only this NMPC is selling because we want to get cheap fuel. They are selling 591. So that's why we are seeing crowd. If you look around, you can see there is queue everywhere. There is no fuel. Other filling stations are selling 900. Some of us who do business with our cars. We cannot buy 900 naira and ask you to pay us maybe 3,000. You say no, you can't pay us. No way. Most of the other filling stations in Port Harcourt are closed 
why few others sell between 850 to 900 naira per liter. This situation has led to a significant increase in transport fare with a severe effect on the spending power of residents. Some people say 880, some people say 850, some people say 870. The different price, like this morning as I buy, I buy 860 this morning. So the same affect both passengers and we will seek at the same price we will carry. I bought 880. It, it thing is disturbing us really. Because we uh, can uh, make the amount we used to make now. For Let them give Dangote enough crude oil to refine and let him refine and give us fuel so the price can come down, so that life can go back to normal. 300 naira will take you to Govern State before. But now, from here, but now you pay up to 1,000 naira. Here is Aji uh, by other judge. You pay up to 1,000 naira or 1,200 before you get to there. You pay the same amount and come back to this place again. The call for the reduction in the fuel price is a noble and general demand of the masses to mitigate the current fuel and economic crisis in the country. Robinson Daratayde, NTN News. It's been 25 years of unbroken democracy and still counting. This is the beautiful story of the Fourth Republic in Nigerian political history. The Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, is not taking these achievements for granted. And a documentary chronicling the journey so far is set to be unveiled. Thimothu Yusuf reports that the documentary aims to reflect both local content and promote Nigeria's image and achievements internationally. The IPAC movie entitled Unbroken Two and Half Decades of Democracy will be a national commemoration of 25 years of uninterrupted practice of democracy in line with IPAC position as a pillar and gatekeeper of democratic principles in the country. The council's chairman Yusuf Dantale noted that Nigeria's democracy survived for 25 years uninterrupted and this significant milestone was achieved not without challenges but through collective patriotic commitments, resilience and hope for the best. Our democracy is not where it should be but certainly not where it used to be and as such with tremendous progress recorded so far Impact assessment is inevitable to embrace our new democratic realities as a nation moving forward. Apart from embedding dialogues in the script to portray the quality of national polity and products, the national principles and products will be projected through other strategic vantage points in the movie, which will improve public perception. Unbroken two and a half decades is an entirely pro-Nigeria and has been endorsed by key stakeholders as a national mirror to reflect positive narratives. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar, says Nigeria's democratic institutions, values and principles are the foundation upon which the nation is built and it remains the constitutional responsibility of the Nigerian Air Force and sister security services to protect and strengthen them. The Chief of Air Staff stood at this at Gumbi while interfacing with the State Governor, Mohammed Inoua Yahya. Air Marshal Obaka noted that though the burden of security resets squarely on the shoulders of the state governors, they are assured of the support of the armed forces and other security agencies as willing partners in ensuring that the freedom and rights of all Nigerians as enshrined in the constitution are upheld and that the rule of law is respected and adhered to in Gombe State. The Chief of the Air Staff commended Governor Yahya for his remarkable achievements as the Governor of Gombe State in the areas of infrastructural development, healthcare improvement and upliftment of educational standards, which has brought about substantial progress, enhancement of quality lives and the Governor's investment drive that has placed Gombe State TAPS for ease of doing business in Nigeria for two years on record. President Bola Tinubu extends his warm congratulations to Senator Solomon Olamile Kwadeola Siwen, fondly called Yai, on his birthday. The senator representing Ogun West in the Senate 
is a chartered accountant and an accomplished tax consultant. The president commends him as the chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriations for his efforts in enriching the legislative process and advancing crucial legislation. President Tinobu joins family, friends and members of the National Assembly to celebrate the senator on this special occasion and wishes him good health and success in his service to the nation. And now a quick look at the weather prospects for Sunday in Nigeria and other parts of the globe. And that's the news of the International. Thanks for being a part of it. I am Olajide Bello.